I had no plans at discussing this topic again until this picture came up in my Facebook feed. If the quality of this photo was a little bit dated and I didn't know who's in the picture, you could have told me that this was from the early 2000s and I would have totally believed you. This flipped me out because it was no more than maybe a year or so ago that the talk of the return of Y2K fashion was popping up all over the internet. And this, of course, struck fear into the hearts of the many of us who lived through it because of the sheer amount of us who came out of it with body dysmorphia. And here we are, no more than a year or so later, and not only is the fashion everywhere, like they said, but celebrities are once again altering their bodies to suit the clothes, taking this trend right back to the dangerous place it was all those years ago. And here's a picture from the early 2000s versus one from this year. Can you spot the difference? Before I get into, you know, the depth of the video, I want to give a little bit of a backstory because I did tell this story before, but this needs to be further explored. So as a little bit of a backstory, I had, I had an eating disorder. However, if you would have brought up any kind of disordered eating or, you know, this kind of thing would come up with people, this is not something that I would have empathized with a few years back because I would never consider myself part of that group because I never thought I had one. And it wasn't until recently that I realized that I did. And right now it, it makes me anxious because it's a subject that is quite nerve wracking and kind of triggering for me because at the time I didn't realize that I'd had an eating disorder. I just thought that I, I was clever. I saw myself as somebody who was regimented I uh, had really strong willpower. I was at the gym seven days a week. I didn't realize that what I actually had had was a specific or maybe multiple different kinds of eating disorders because at the time and really throughout my life, I really only thought that there were two kinds of eating disorders. Either you had bulimia or you had anorexia. It was either one or the other. And if it wasn't one of those, you didn't have one. So of course with what I was doing, I didn't think that I was doing anything wrong anyway, because I was eating, as far as I was concerned, very healthily. I was eating a lot. I was eating on, I was eating on a schedule. I was going to the gym and I felt good. That's the problem, is that I felt good. I felt strong and I had control over my body and I was losing weight. And that's the main, um, the main word about this whole thing is control. And I tell you, hindsight is 2020 when it comes to a lot of these things. And I realize now that so much of these things were really rooted in control. Because once I saw that I had that control over my body, that I, I was making that scale move. I did this. But the moment that you are given such a crazy example of body autonomy right in front of your face. Like you are looking at something that you did. You've changed yourself. You did that yourself. And it just, that in itself triggered something in me that I, I took it to another level. And uh, I will explain. So when I made my video about this last year, it was when all of these articles started appearing, like Y2K coming back in fashion and uh, you know, nowadays, all of these different aesthetics, they all have these different names. And back when it first appeared, it was just the early 2000s. But now, this particular style is being referred to as Y2K. And I saw these articles featuring clothes and um, I guess you would say starlets, more like uh, heiresses and things that were, um, that would wear the things. And it brought back a ton of memories. And I wanted to give you a little bit of insight of what it was like to be there. And I know that a lot of people who were there around that time, when they saw those articles surfacing that like, welcome back Y2K, Y2K is coming back in style. And they were showing like the low slung jeans. They were showing the, the tiny little crop tops. They were showing the weird asymmetrical poorly cut items that were only designed for one type of body only and it wasn't a healthy body or in any way a type of body that was common that was the type of body that you had to put in a lot of work for we were not ready for 
So for me, what I was doing in my life around that time was I was an aspiring actress. As an aspiring actress, you tend to be scouted a lot for modeling as well. So you end up on photo shoots for varying things, whether it, um, whether it be artistic, whether it be promotions, it's ads. There are designers, like independent local designers that are looking for models for their brand, things like that. So I did a lot of things like that. I went on a lot of auditions. I was on a lot of film sets and I had a lot of experience there. So when this thing started appearing, this is around the time where there was a really big shift in media. And the shift was, it wasn't just actresses or actors or musicians that were popular. It was just rich people were becoming popular. It was people becoming popular for doing absolutely nothing other than partying and being in the limelight. And these people, they had a specific body type. And when they were thrust into the spotlight, some of them were actors and actresses, but also some of them were not. Um, you know, Namely, you had Paris Hilton, you had Nicole Richie, um, the Kardashians weren't quite as popular yet. They weren't popular really back then. But, you know, we also had Tara Reid, you had Brittany Murphy, you had uh, Kira Knightley, Kate Bosworth, and the people that I'm naming are people that really donned that body type. So as these people are thrust into the spotlight, so too are the things that they're wearing. And when it comes to regular stores, they're gonna take inspiration and they're gonna take direction from whatever is most popular. And this is what was popular. They were on every channel, TMZ type things. They had their own reality shows, they were on magazines, they were on tablets, they were on everything. You couldn't go anywhere and not see them. You stand online line in the grocery store, you go to the mall and go to buy clothes and there's like billboards of them and they're everywhere. There really was no escape. However, the one thing that stood out about them is their body type. And the thing about their body type was it was quite extreme in terms of thinness. And the clothing that they wore were designed for their specific body type. But here's the problem. When you have these clothes that are appearing in stores that are cut for that particular body type and you yourself are of average body type, you could really be of any body type other than that, it doesn't matter. You can even be slender. These clothes did not look right because they were only cut for people with skeletal frames. They were cut in such a way that would emphasize parts of your body that otherwise you wouldn't have even shaken a stick at. But now all of a sudden, you're looking down at your body and you're looking at yourself wearing these clothes, wondering where all these bulges came from. And that was a scary place to be. You know, and it, I never considered myself to be overweight and I always took care of myself. I went to the gym and all of a sudden, whereas these things are becoming popularized, now all of a sudden I'm having to compete with these people when it comes to auditions and it comes to other things. Now I'm showing up on photo shoots and I'm getting poked by photographers, like wondering like, hmm, you know, maybe you're a little big. I'm, so, I'm not gonna use numbers because I learned my lesson from the last video, but I was not a high weight to begin with. But at this point, my weight, all of a sudden, I'm noticing it now. And suddenly I'm thinking, okay, I am a little bit bigger because I'm looking at all the bodies around me now and everyone else is essentially their skeletal. And nobody is saying anything about it. Nobody is saying that anything is wrong with it. And that's the thing, this thing became completely normalized. And even my own family would, I remember my aunt, I will never forget this, she came up to me and of course I'm wearing the clothes that I, I bought in the store because it's the only thing I can find because nothing is cut right. And I'm wearing something that looked fairly decent on me. She came up to me and she grabbed my hip, the kind of thing that would muffin top, and she goes, hey Ange, you can pinch an inch. I'm like, you're not too fucking small yourself, lady. But that kind of thing, it it sticks with you, you know, because it's, it's kind of like, you know, the, the tree remembers but the ax forgets kind of situation, and that's really what it's all about. Like, you, you remember absolutely everything. So I started to really focus on my body. I'm like, okay, I need, I need to get in shape. There's something wrong with me. I'm, I'm so much bigger than everybody else. 
For a bit of perspective, when I talk about these drastic concepts and behaviors that were normalized, something that you heard quite a lot back then were the words size zero. This was the crowning achievement that many had aspired to, and there was a lot of bragging from people who made it to that very goal size. Until the size double zero was introduced. So for a frame of reference, that's four sizes smaller than Jenna Ortega. Back then, no one spoke of disordered eating, but it's not like that topic was publicly met with approval either because it was sneaky. It wasn't discussed at all. Just the end goal, never the journey, which translated to, it doesn't matter what you have to do to get there so long as you get there. You could see veins in people's arms. You could see actual like muscle fibers through their skin. And I wanted that. I'm like, oh, why don't I have that? Like, you know, you'd see Kira Knightley, low slung jeans, and you'd see these hip bones jutting out. And I'm like, oh, why not me? I felt like there was something wrong with me. Like, why don't I have these things? So I took it to an extreme. I exercised like crazy seven days a week and the weight really wasn't shifting and I had a goal weight in mind. I'm not going to say what that was, but it was an unrealistic goal, but it was in mind. So I had asked one of the personal trainers who was also very much involved in fitness competitions. I asked him for a little bit of assistance. I'm like, listen, you see me, I'm here every week. What the hell is going on? And, um, he gave me some advice. He said, you need to eat five times a day eat five times a day, drink your weight in water, make sure you're getting enough fluids because people are chronically dehydrated, you gotta drink that water. And you wanna operate under the assumption that really most things white are bad for you. Most things white. Things like sugar, bread, rice, potatoes, creams, anything in that kind of vein, all of those things are gonna be bad. However, things like egg whites, were okay. So I designed an entire meal plan for myself where I would eat five times a day and sugar, bad, okay, but how am I going to treat myself? I know diabetic cookies because they don't contain any sugar and I'll only allow myself one uh, a day as a reward. I will eat five times a day and I would exercise. So the kiss of death is the first second I saw that scale move downward. That's when it came because that's when something snapped and that's when I saw the control that I had over my body. That's when I saw that I was making this happen and that's when everything changed because I took it to an extreme because it was along the lines of, oh, check it out, look what you just did. If you could do that, I bet you can do more. Let's rein it in, let's make it more regimented. So I spent more time at the gym, I did more cardio, I reduced my calorie intake and then I started abusing laxatives like an idiot because in my mind, bulimia, throwing up, anorexia, not eating, I'm not doing either of those things because to me, a normal body process is to use the toilet. That's normal. When you're throwing up, your body throws up because something shouldn't be there. That's the sign of it being sick. Using the toilet, that's normal. That's what the body does. So my mindset was this. It was, okay. I'm eating, I'm eating normal things, I'm eating healthy things, I'm eating a good amount of things, but what if I sped up the process between entrance and exit to where it was so fast that my body wouldn't have time to convert that to fat and it wouldn't stick? Genius plan, right? In my mind, I'm cheating the system. No. So that that only works for a very short amount of time because not only are you not allowing your body to absorb the fat, you're not allowing your body to absorb any kind of nutrition and you're screwing up your peristalsis, you're screwing up your gut, you're screwing up everything. There was a quote from Kate Moss and she had said, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. If you have ever experienced the pain of cramp-free laxative, And let me just tell you, no laxatives are cramp-free. No, not a single one. It is all 100% pain-fueled. It hurts so bad. Your guts are just trying to just give it the old ring and get everything out. And sometimes there's nothing left. 
but you've taken so much that your body's basically spasming to get this out. And I, I remember there were mornings where the pain, it was like stabbing pain, waking me up. And I would run to the bathroom and sometimes I'd, I'm there for like an hour before anything would happen because the spasming and the swelling inside, because you do swell, you swell internally, is just so bad that nothing can you know, make it from point A to point B, so to speak. So when I think of that quote, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, they clearly never felt the pain of laxative abuse because I don't, I don't recommend it because I think um, if you should fear anything in the world, fear this pain because I promise you there is nothing more humbling in the world than pain. So the thing that scared me enough last year to prompt the video and tell my story was articles about the resurgence of Y2K fashion. So not only is Y2K fashion back now a year later, but the bodies are back now. And that's the dangerous part. And I'm sure a lot of you may be asking, so how does a goth, somebody who's in the goth scene, you are alternative by nature, you're on the fringe, you're not involved in pop culture in any way, how does someone like you become affected by that kind of thing? pretty freaking easy and if you realized how easy it was it would scare the crap out of you because you don't have to be anything but a normal person to be affected eventually because what happened 20 years ago was these bodies were so normalized these girls were praised for their skeletal frames praised for it and anybody with just a normal body type your normal healthy body type they were looked up and down. So how do you become affected? You become affected by it becoming normalized and you being treated as something you're not. It becomes normalized when you're surrounded by nothing but these body types and suddenly you start looking at your own. You become affected when you try to buy clothing and you see that all these clothing are cut in ways that you wouldn't normally wear clothes. What's really important is when you see all of this around and now I'm seeing, not only am I seeing these cuts in you know your normal clothing stores i'm seeing it in alt stores now too uh, for example i see a lot of ads for like dolls kill pop up dolls kill is essentially an alternative store that people still do buy from the several designers that they carry they're partaking in the y2k style slung pants really crop tops and all the models that they have wearing it are people who are rail thin because that's the only body types it's going to look normal on Compared to 20 years ago, celebrity culture is more present now than ever before, and it's everywhere. So the course of media has changed so much over the last 20 years since the first time this fashion came around, because now that's really all that it is. And image is even more so important now than ever, because 20 years ago, we really didn't have social media. You had things like LiveJournal and MySpace and things like that, but now you have Instagram, you have a lot of these image-based platforms where everyone is in competition with each other and everybody's trying to make it by way of how they look. Whereas when I was younger, me trying to make it in the acting industry, I was competing with these people in person. So it, it's almost like being thrust back in time seeing this whole thing happen again because the only thing that I see that's changed is accessibility because they have way more exposure now. And I'm looking at the body types, it's exactly the same. And that's one of the main things that I feared would happen last year. So my fear was that it would be the return of these body types and we would be seeing it in a really big way, bigger than before, because back then we had like Live Journal, we had MySpace. We didn't have very much in the way of things like social media. And now the way that we view people like influencers or people that are popular, like the way that we view them now, they're idolized and we wanna do what they do. I say we, but I don't necessarily mean me. I've been down that road before. So there was always that fear because these people always have to stay current with trends. So if you know that fashion returned, would they go as far as changing their body types like that. And I don't like using the Kardashians as an example for things like popularity, but when it comes to things like that, you can't not see them, they're everywhere. And the fact that not only are they everywhere, but now suddenly these people who kind of prided themselves 
on claiming that they coined the whole skinny thick thing, you know, making people feel comfortable having curves, suddenly they are now skeletal, as in you can see ribs, not body shaming, I'm just saying. It's a huge contrast from where they were versus where they are now, and they are totally keeping with the whole theme of Y2K. Not only are they donning the fashion, but they're donning the body type as well, and that was my biggest fear. Because once that body type becomes popularized, it's only gonna get worse. And I don't want people to fall into the same trap that I did. Here are some shots of me in the early 2000s where you can see the transformation. Back then, I was considered curvy, borderline chubby. It was easy for me to believe that since everyone around me was significantly smaller and I was the biggest girl there. Then, my new friend regimen started to work. And the thing that freaks me out about the whole thing is the way that I received praise, the more emaciated I became, and I was happy about it. Today, I would be running to the endocrinologist wondering if I were afflicted by some bloodborne pathogen. Now, I am a pretty large chested girl, and I'm talking F to G cup territory, and in one of these pictures you can see I'm wearing a 22 inch corset. That fit me when I first got it, but once I was at the worst of it, I had this corset during a shoot laced to full capacity and it was still loose on the top. The photographer was shooting from an angle above. He was stood on a ladder and you can see straight down the top of this corset to nothing but ribs. To this day, I wonder what part of it I loved more. Did I like the look or did I like the feeling of control that I had over myself? Either way, there was nothing healthy about that, and I know now in hindsight that prioritizing your health overall is the most important thing. I don't want people to look at themselves in the mirror and whereas they otherwise thought that they looked okay, they were happy with what they saw, suddenly poking at parts of themselves, questioning things, because it's easy to kind of single yourself out when this kind of thing is so common around you and I know because I was there I know because I did it and you know now obviously in hindsight I know that eating disorders come in all shapes and all sizes they there's so many different ones and I have no idea and falling into that trap and looking at yourself in the mirror and kind of comparing yourself and really falling into this dysmorphia trap it's not hard and I know this because I managed to find myself there as well I would be on these auditions I would be on these photo shoots and I'd be surrounded by people who are totally pop culture and I was alternative and I had nothing in common with them absolutely nothing I would make small talk but I really you know I, I had nothing to say to these people it was very it was very awkward for me they would all group together they would talk to each other and I was kind of like the odd man out. I know a few times a lot of them had told me, you know, you should change your hair color, it washes you out, you should make your hair lighter, and I was like, hell no. But it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what your background, it doesn't matter if you're alternative. If you're gonna be affected, you're gonna be affected. And my subcultural affiliation did not protect me from this kind of thing. Dysmorphia is real and there, there really is no way to cheat the system. The only thing you could do is be healthy. And that's really, that's the best possible thing that you can do for yourself is to be healthy. My body still really fully hasn't recovered and that was over 20 years ago. And I still haven't fully recovered from that experience. My stomach is not the same, not by a long shot. And I was really only in the thick of it. I wanna say for about a year, fortunately I moved to England and I wasn't able to maintain that lifestyle because the types of things I was doing to facilitate my disordered eating wasn't available anymore. And I was also very fortunately in a very different place mentally. So when it comes to people that are so familiar to you now because they're literally everywhere, they're on your favorite TV shows, they're all over social media, they're people that are so familiar that they almost feel as if you know them and suddenly they're dropping the pounds and they're looking like this, it's not gonna seem abnormal to you and that's how it's normalized. That's how it was normalized back then because 
when you make something so popular to where it's literally everywhere, you start feeling like the odd man out, not them. It's not the people who you can literally see muscle fibers through their skin. No, it's you that are trying on the clothes that are cut for them that are all over the stores and don't look right in them and suddenly you think you're the problem. That's not the case. It never will be and I'm seeing it happen again. Um, I, just, I don't want you to fall victim and end up in the place that I was because I was horribly abusive to myself, not only emotionally, but physically. I abuse my body to the point where I'm still physically affected to this day. And I don't want to see you where I was.